Marshwood High School's 1996 commencement exercises. And what a beautiful evening it is. Someone was smiling on us. <laughs> as long as the black cloud doesn't come along, we'll be all set. I'd like to, uh, first of all, uh, this was my first year as principal of Marshwood High School, and it has been a tremendous year. Very positive and wonderful. And I owe that to a great deal of uh, many people. I owe that to you, the people in the community, for having such great support for education, for you, the parents and guardians of these wonderful children, for my outstanding staff, but I particularly owe it to the senior class. They are a group of incredible individuals. When I first met with them as their new principal, I told them that I knew that when you have a new principal come on board, it is most difficult for the senior class. That's the group that has impacted the most. I asked them to trust me, to give me time, to bear with me, and we would have a great year. And I certainly believe we had a great year. And I want to wholeheartedly give them my thanks for having such a positive impact on my life. I thank you. We will now hear from Buren Swenson. Good evening. On behalf of my class, I would also like to welcome you and thank you for coming to our commencement tonight. I feel we have an uncommon community spirit in our class and would like to take this opportunity, opportunity to express the most important lessons I have learned about the qualities of the community from my interaction with you. The first lesson I have learned concerns the development of separate identities. What a wonderful experience it has been for so many of us to grow up together, more than a hundred people of the same age, sharing many of the same experiences. I think back to the beginning of junior high school when appearances were more important and many of us strived to fit into a common mold. Separate personalities are less detectable when I read the end pages of my sixth grade yearbook and every, where every friend wrote, you are cool, have an awesome summer, or some variation of that. We have come a long way since those days and have learned to feel more comfortable with our individuality. Look around at each other today and notice how different each of us looks. Some of us have long hair, some short, some none. <laughs> some dress casually while others are dressed to a tee. Our interaction with each other has played a major role in the fostering the development of our separate identities. Leo Tolstoy said, True life is lived when tiny changes occur. I have also learned about the unique relationship between a group and its members. Involvement in a dynamic group can aid our personal development in many positive ways. In Deng Ming Dao's book on Tao philosophy, the author discusses the correlation between a group and its individual members' relationships. Quote, when we become involved with a fellowship, we must gradually become an integral, organic part of that organization. The relationship will be one of mutual influence. We must carefully influence the collective, and in turn, will be shaped by the company we keep. In my own experience as class president, I have witnessed this relation between the class and its members. My role was very different in our freshman year, when everyone was attempting to settle into high school life, from what it is today, as many of my classmates are willing to assist in planning events. People's increased interest has helped me to become more secure in my role. The many artistic talents which have developed among us have changed the character of our class as a whole. Many of us have gained a greater appreciation for music and art after witnessing the work of several gifted classmates. The third mark of a community which I have witnessed among us is the respect of individual differences. 
Through our friendships, we have learned to adjust to differing personality traits and to respect differences in ability and interest. Whether we have been aware of it or not, I think every friendship among us has caused a change in each person involved. Carl Jung said that the meeting of two personalities is like the contact of two chemical substances. If there is any reaction, both are transformed. Many of my friends have changed me by forcing me to relax and avoid unnecessary stress. I have seen the involvement of an atmosphere of mutual respect in my classes. For example, many conflicting opinions on controversial issues had surfaced in my contemporary America class this year. However, even after the most heated debates in the classroom, my classmates and I have often left the room laughing. Differences in opinion have no impact on the quality of my friendship. It does not matter if my friends share my opinions and beliefs as long as we are able to appreciate differences among us. This concept of mutual respect is the foundation of a healthy diversity and plays a meaningful part in the community spirit on which we have been complemented by several faculty members. Another quality I have found in many of my classmates is genuine concern. My friends not only listen to me, but try to understand me. They hear my ideas and problems and respond, ask me questions, and share their own thoughts. In acting as a support group, they have helped to ease difficult times. A lack of self-centeredness is vital to any cooperative community. The sharing of ideas on both academic and personal levels is also important. This has taken place in most of my classes here. Some of my best classroom experiences have occurred when I've been able to bounce ideas off others and teach them about something I alone have learned. I have not only enjoyed opportunities to share my thoughts and opinions, but have learned to listen to others and try to understand, even when their ideas seem nonsensical at first. This is an invaluable skill. In the greater scheme of life, the most severe mistakes are made when people are biased from the beginning, when they ignore opposing perspectives. In the future, we will need to consider all facets of an issue in order to make an informed decision when we vote, as we decide how to raise our children, and in making important career-oriented decisions. I thank all of the teachers who have encouraged cooperative, interactive learning in a book entitled The Artist's Way, I read that, quote, real learning comes about when the competitive spirit has ceased. <coughs> in conclusion, I have felt lucky to have been a part of this class. I have witnessed and been a part of the development of separate identities, the unique relationship between a group and its members, respecting individual differences, showing genuine concern for others, and the benefits of sharing ideas. Now, as we all head toward colleges, trade schools, the military, marriages, etc., we can take what we have learned from each other with us. We now have the ability to create support groups and help shape communities of new people with qualities similar to those of our class. William Bridges said that, quote, genuine beginnings begin within us even when they are brought to our attention by external opportunities. Thank you. Now switching gears here. As class president, it is now my pleasure to present our gift to Marshwood High School. First, the class of 1996 has spent $800 in the purchase of eight wooden handcrafted benches. Four of these will be intended for use inside the building, while the remaining benches will be suitable for outdoor use. Each will be marked with identification of this class. It is our hope that these benches will promote a greater atmosphere of comfort here. We also have another gift to present. At this time, Sean Murphy will explain. The other gift that the class of 1996 would like to leave Marshwood High School is the idea and some seed money to initiate a Marshwood Hall of Fame. This Hall of Fame would give an opportunity for former graduates
to be recognized for their accomplishments in their lives after Marshall. A committee will be established to set a criteria for the recipients of this prestigious honor. The committee will be comprised of the principal, senior advisor, and a few of Marshall's community most active and knowledgeable members. Finally, we hope that the contributions will be made by the Marshall community and the classes that follow this wonderful class of 1996. Thank you. The Real World of a Teacher, Her Students, and Their High School by Samuel G. Friedman. And the winner of this award in the area of music is Tracy Richards. <laughs> the next book is entitled Lies My Teacher Told Me, Everything Your American History Textbooks Got Wrong. And it's really an unusual title, but it really is um, a book that asks whoever reads it to really question some of the things that they were taught and to think critically. This is by James W. Lowen, and it is presented in the area of social studies to be Lauren Swinton. by Dana Ficaros and Michael Paul, and it is presented in the area of foreign language to Bradley McGregor. <laughs> the next book is entitled Dinosaur, Dinosaur in a Haystack, and it is by Stephen J. Gold. It is presented in the area of science to Megan Hudson. is entitled Edward Hopper, an Intimate Biography by Dale Levin, and it is awarded in the area of art to Kim Bumpal. Bumpal Kim.
Thank you all, and congratulations to all the graduates and the family staff. Again, to uh, receive many scholarships, and let me just give you a quick breakdown of these scholarships. From uh, local area organizations, scholarships and awards total twenty-four thousand five hundred. College scholarships grants one hundred eleven thousand two hundred sixty-five. State scholarships and grants ten thousand one hundred twenty-one dollars for a total of one hundred forty-five thousand eight hundred eighty-six dollars. I will now have the individual recipients uh, please stand and I will announce uh, the various scholarships and grants they have received. William Andrews. William will be attending the University of Western Florida and he has received a uh, Future Business Leaders of America Award for $300. Joanna Berry. Joanna will be attending the University of Vermont, majoring in social work. She will be receiving the National Honor Society Scholarship for $400. <laughs> Lindsay Bunting. Lindsay will be attending Emory University, majoring in English. She will receive the Maine Masonic Temple Scholarship for $500, the Class of 1996 Project Graduation Scholarship for $500. Joanne Campbell, attending the University of New Hampshire, majoring in elementary education. She will be receiving University of New Hampshire Dean Scholarship for $4,500, Teachers for Maine Program $3,000, Tuition grant of $5,800, the Crompton Education Association Scholarship of $400. Jennifer Caswell. Jennifer will be attending University of Southern Maine and is receiving a scholarship from the First Congregational Church in Elliott, $150. Heather Clark will be attending the University of Hartford, majoring in occupational therapy. She's a recipient of the University of Hartford alumni grant of $4,000, the University of Hartford University grant of $7,200, National Honor Society scholarship of $300. Jennifer Clark. Jennifer will be attending the University of Southern Maine. She'll be the recipient of the Linwood Savage Memorial Scholarship for $200, the Marshwood High School Music Booster Scholarship for $300. <laughs> Jessica Cody. Jessica will be attending the University of Delaware, majoring in history. She is the recipient of the Elliott Lions Club Scholarship for $350. <laughs> Kelly Duffy. Kelly will be attending Endicott College, majoring in physical education. She is the recipient of the Bartlett E. Shapley Memorial Scholarship for $250. <laughs> Kelly Duquette. Kelly will be attending Notre Dame College in Physical Therapy. She is the recipient of the Holy Cross Scholarship for $2,500, the Strawberry Festival Annual Scholarship for $1,000, Post Number 47 American Legion Memorial Scholarship for $200. Amy Fontaine. Amy will be attending the University of Southern Maine, majoring in social work. She is the recipient of the Richard Gagnon Memorial Scholarship for $500. <laughs> J. 
David Fulton. David will be attending James Madison University, majoring in business. He is a recipient of the National Honor Society Scholarship for $500, the First Congregational Church and Elliott Scholarship for $150, and the Robert Gould Scholarship for $250. Nolan Griffin. Nolan is attending New Hampshire Technical College at Laconia, majoring in automotive. He is the recipient of the Kennebunk Savings Bank Scholarship for $1,000. Michelle Pennington. Michelle will be attending Springfield College, majoring in athletic training. She is the recipient of the Class of 96 Project Graduation Award of $500. Megan Hodgson. Megan will be attending the University of New Hampshire, majoring in biology. She is the recipient of the Principal's Award for $400, the Rollinsford South York Lions Club Scholarship for $300, the University of New Hampshire Dean Scholarship for $4,500. Marie Hood. Marie will be attending University of Maine at Orno, majoring in elementary ed. She is the recipient of the Class of 96 Project Graduation Scholarship for $500. Mark Hunter. Mark Hunter will be attending University of Maine at Orno, majoring in electrical engineering. He is the recipient of the Marshwood High School Recognition Award for $200. Amy Jennings. Amy will be attending Clark University, majoring in biochemistry. She is the recipient of Alumni and Friends Scholarship for $4,500. Gustav H. Carlson Scholarship, $6,500. The Guild of Portsmouth Regional Hospital Scholarship Fund, $1,000. Class of 96 Project Graduation Scholarship, $500. Marshwood Basketball Booster Scholarship, $100. The York County Barrick M. Shagels and Beaver Dam Grange Educational Fund Scholarship for $600. <laughs> Melissa Locke. Melissa will be attending the University of Maine at Farmington, majoring in secondary social science. She is the recipient of the Crompegan Education Association Scholarship for $400, the Rupert Begleville Memorial Scholarship of $150, the Celia M. Ebert American Legion Scholarship for $300, Teachers for Maine Program, $3,000. Allison Marshall. Allison will be attending Bowdoin College, majoring in chemistry and biology. She is the recipient of the Foundation for Seacoast Health Scholarship for $4,000, the Welch Scholarship for $18,000, and the Principal's Award for $400. <laughs> John Matthews. John will be attending Johnson & Wales University, majoring in culinary arts. He is the recipient of the Johnson & Wales Presidential Scholarship for $4,000. Bradley McGregor. Brad will be attending Tufts University with a major in mathematics with pre-medical requirements. He is the recipient of the St. Michael's Women's Club Scholarship for $300, National Honor Society Scholarship for $200, Principal's Award for $400, the Robert T. Byrd Honor Scholarship Program for $1,121. Richard Muir. Richard will be attending University of Maine at Orno, majoring in engineering. 
is a recipient of the Theodore Libby Memorial Scholarship for $500, the Kenneth Finney Scholarship for $250, the Marshwood Basketball Booster Scholarship for $200, the Elliott Winter Basketball League Scholarship for $200. John Murphy. John will be attending Plymouth State College, majoring in physical education. He is the recipient of the Linwood Sadler Memorial Scholarship for $200, the Class of 96 Project Graduation Scholarship for $500. Jason Murray. Jason will be attending the University of New Hampshire Thompson School, majoring in civil technology. He is the recipient of the Brian Beckner Memorial Scholarship for $300. Paul Parody. Paul will be attending the University of Maine at Orono. He is the recipient of the University of Maine Athletic Scholarship for $2,000. Jeff Parmley. Jeff will be attending Hudson College, majoring in business administration. He is the recipient of the Weatherbane Scholarship for $250, the Hudson College grant for $1,920. Jason Payer. Jason will be attending Springfield College. He is a recipient of the Springfield College Scholarship Grant for $11,000. Aaron Peterson. Aaron will be attending Keene State College, majoring in fitness management. He is a recipient of the Marshwood Basketball Booster Scholarship for $200, the Marshwood High School Recognition Award for $200. Tracy Richards. Tracy will be attending the University of Maine at Farmington, majoring in secondary English education. She is the recipient of the Elliott High School Memorial Scholarship for $300, the Elliott High School Alumni Scholarship for $300. Daniel Sanborn. Dan will be attending the University of Delaware, majoring in materials and chemical engineering. He is the recipient of the Moses Farmer Memorial Scholarship for $100. Mary Ann Short. Mary Ann will be attending Plymouth State College, majoring in health education. She is the recipient of the Plymouth State College Scholarship for $2150. The Marshwood High School Recognition Award for $200. Laura Swan. Laura will be attending Northeastern University. She is the recipient of a Northeastern University grant for $6,075. Erica Snow. Erica will be attending Endicott College, majoring in athletic training. She is the recipient of the Marshwood High School Recognition Award for $200. Jennifer St. Clair. Jennifer will be attending Bradford College. She's a member of the recipient of the First and Great Congregational Church in Elliott Scholarship for $150. Jern <laughs> Swenson. Jern will be attending Bowdoin College, majoring in history with education as a minor and hopefully a future school administrator. <laughs> I need to talk to him. <laughs> he is a recipient of the Bowdoin College Scholarship Grant for $18,050. He is also <laughs> South Berwick Rotary Club Scholarship for $1,000, the George Mitchell Scholarship Fund $2,500, the Strawberry Festival Annual Scholarship for $1,000. 
Jeffrey Upton. Jeff will be attending Northeastern University, majoring in criminal justice. He is the recipient of the Northeastern University grant for $8,570, the Elwin Zamarki Scholarship for $100, the Kevin Currier Memorial Scholarship for $150, the St. Michael's Women's Club Scholarship for $300. Seth Weider. Seth will be attending the Rhode Island School of Design, majoring in graphic design. He's a recipient of the Seacoast Artist Association Scholarship for $700 and the Marshwood High School Recognition Award for Is indeed a valuable one. 
She spoke these words in reference to the catastrophic events of her time. These were the bitter experiences of her generation. Yet, the same message still echoes today, in 1996, as we deal with our own withering offers and bitter experiences. The relevancy of those words spoken over six decades ago is certainly apparent in what appears to be the ever-changing society of today. Every generation has their bitter experiences. In the 1940s, World War II haunted the minds of the youth. The young people of the 1950s faced the Red Scare, and the 1960s brought the Civil Rights Movement and the su surrounding violence which permeated the minds of society. Today, we can only hope that we have learned from our own bitter experiences, such as the Cold War, the current horrible situation in Bosnia, and the poverty in many countries around our world. As is true in 1934, you must keep a mind open and remain independent and sensible in times of chaos or confusion. You just can't become one of the crowd who takes the most thrilling offer uncritically. We must be our own leaders. An example of this concept will be implemented as the majority of us begin to voice our opinions to the most powerful democratic tool, the right to vote in the upcoming presidential election. As we cast our ballot for Bob Dole or Bill Clinton, we must understand the true value of our undertaking. One vote will certainly make a difference. The personal lessons will determine the fate of our country as we enter the new millennium. Understand their policies and how they will tackle the bitter experiences which we face today. Be skeptical of withering offers like George Bush's Read My Lips, No New Taxes. These outward promises are often forgotten when the candidate has achieved his goal and is treated as President of the United States. Yet, remember, this election is only one of many important decisions we will face as we enter the next century. Although this one vote will make a difference, a lifetime of important decisions will have a far greater impact upon yourself and society. I urge you to heed the advice given by my grandmother 62 years ago as we tackle these similar issues and ideas. In conclusion, as we enter the next millennium and plan our futures, I repeat her words once more. Quote, I hope that our education here has given us the determination that we will investigate and that we will understand. So, as we each pave our own road, I wish everyone the best of luck as we attempt to embody the last lines of Alfred Lord Tennyson's famous poem, Ulysses. As we too hope to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield in the pursuit for our worthy goal. Thank you very much.
time, it's to a great pleasure that I officially certify to our superintendent, Mr. Wesley Kennedy, that the students seated before him today have met the requirements for a Marshwood High School diploma. Our superintendent, Mr. Wesley Kennedy. My congratulations to the class of 1996. Parents and friends, teachers, former teachers, are here to honor you. Just before you receive your diploma, I have one last homework assignment. <laughs> and that homework assignment is this. Just take a moment right now to think back to that teacher who in your life made a real difference. The teacher who was willing to stay after school to help you to teach more than the subject area, and a person who you really would like to say thank you to. It might have been a first grade teacher, a third grade teacher, a fifth grade teacher. And I guarantee you, if you take a minute in the next week or so, you just drop a note to that teacher. The teacher will remember you, and you will never forget it, and I guarantee you the teacher won't either. Secondly, remember those ideals of that teacher felt were most important. Remember that the teacher thought of you first and was more than a teacher, that person was a mentor. And I would encourage you to continue that tradition, never too young to be a mentor. And if you would think of that teacher as you go out of this place today and continue those ideals, you'll be a better person and just maybe the world will be a better place. Now that you've done your homework, we'll have a presentation of diplomas to the class of 96. Peter. 
Africa. Brandon and Michael Gold.
Jennifer Marie St. Clair. Crystal Leah Grevin. Jennifer Ann Hanson. Joanne Marie Campbell. Christina Rose Van Gorder. Jennifer Marie Caswell. Heather Lynn Clark. Michelle Lee Hennington. Jeremy Wayne Lovejoy. Nathan Burt DeCock. Kristen Ann Brown. David Andrew Gagnon. Andrew William Lytle. Bethany Lynn Greenwood. Jessica Lee Cote. Daniel Air Sanborn.
Angelique Gabrielle LaPrade. Amanda Marie Pryor. Catherine Ann Stone. Diane Marie Osborne. Stephanie M. Wiggins.
to make a speech. We've grown a lot since three eggs and ham, but just like Marshall's, it will always be in our hearts. <laughs> there once was a girl named Maggie McKay. She was surprised by the quick arrival of graduation day. Left together, right together, rang in her head. And she kept her facing like Doc Curly had said. <laughs> she, had paid, she had paid her class dues. She wore her best shoes. She knew Mrs. Burkstam would not have the blues. She held her head high, gave out a long sigh, and looked at the crowd as she slowly passed by. She caught a quick peek of her fluttering mother, who cried in a hell tight to her poor little brother. I won't let you grow up, she loved in his ear. You, for, you will forever stay right next to me here. Father tried to remain stoic and strong, but tears in his eyes proved he couldn't last long. Relatives flew in from Kalamazoo, and now proudly watched dancing Maggie McKay. She smiled up at Senna and John, whose big day was now a year by dawn. In their faces, experience left traces of wisdom they gained in beyond high school places. A part of her longed to journey beyond, but to her school she felt the tight bond. <coughs> She stepped up on the rises and sat in her chair, felt comfort in faces surrounding her there. For four 
four years now, they had grown up together. Their friendship held strong through all kinds of weather. Like the brisk breeze of autumn that scatters the leaves, that desperately try to cling to the trees. She felt a wind rising on this great day, knowing they soon would go their own way. And though it would be the last time they sat side by side, their memories would remain, remind them of their thrilling ride. She remembered the first day she stepped into the hall. The seniors above her seemed so very tall. She faced many choices, had all sorts of voices. Her voice from within was not very loud. It was often much easier to follow the crowd. Her sophomore year, she had grown quite a bit. The clothes from last year no longer fit. She was tired of following the whims of the crowd, and the voice from within began to get loud. By her third year of school, she, no longer a fool, learned to appreci appreciate the differences in personalities and appearances. Diversity Day helped her to know that loving our people would cause her to grow. And soon came the last year of her high school career. At the last pep rally, the juniors had won, but juniors, class match wit was more fun. Although her parents and her teachers tried to vaccinate her, the contraction of deadly senioritis did occur. <laughs> Secretary heard excuses galore of why she couldn't attend period four, or five, or six, or seven, writing her own notes was close to heaven. Her flashback ended as her name was announced, and back down the risers she eagerly bounced. She turned and faced the formidable man, and four years had ended with a shake of his hand. The diploma she held tight to her chest was a gift from the teachers, the brightest, the best. They had given her much more than a good education. Strength, humor, wisdom, a solid foundation. Yes, they had given her much more. They had given her the tools to open life's door. And as she sat in her seat in the scorching hot heat, she knew wherever she traveled, wherever she roamed, she would always have this place to call her home. Her family, her friends, her parents, her teachers, you who sit now up in those bleachers, remember the story of Maggie McKay, for you'll be in our hearts as we head on our way. We love you all. Thank you for everything you've done. Congratulations, class of 1996.